Under the Nazi regime, there was no official law or policy prohibiting sexual relations between women. Nonetheless, beginning in 1933, the Nazi regime harassed and destroyed lesbian communities and networks that had developed during the Weimar Republic. But the Nazi regime never expected that queer relations could arise in its concentration camps. Not only between the inmates themselves, but also between Alf Serenin and inmates, such as Annalisa Coleman, the Tiefstuck German Nazi camp guard, or as the prisoners dubbed her, the deviant monster of Tiefstuck. Annalisa Coleman was born on March 23, 1921 in Hamburg, as an illegitimate daughter of a poor woman. In year 1925, she was adopted at the age of four by a Freemason family. They were a middle-class couple with no children, and was named after her new family name, Coleman. George Coleman, was a teacher at the venerable Hamburg von Schaff School, while his wife Margaret, was a housewife. Unlike her family, Annalisa was raised as a Christian, and attended a private secondary school for girls, but she didn't complete her high school. In year 1938, she worked as a cook at the Red Cross, during her mandatory year. Later, she worked as a tram conductor, to earn her living. In year 1940, when Annalisa was 19 years old, she joined the NSDAP or the Nazi party. During this time, she started to have relationships with other women. However, she got engaged to a man in year 1943. In November 1944, the employment office committed her to the Waffen-SS, which is a combat branch of the Nazi party's SS organization, as a concentration camp guard. She was employed in the Neugraben, which is considered a satellite camp of Neuengamme concentration camp. On the outskirts of Hamburg, Annalisa with the other 500 women, who all came from the Theresienstadt family camp in Auschwitz, had to clear away the ruins in Hamburg, and help with the reconstruction, while supervising the female prisoners. On February 8, 1945, Annalisa with the prisoners were transferred to another subcamp, which is Tiefstuck, where she worked as an Aufseherin. Annalisa used to wear shirts and trousers all the time. And because of her short hair and boyish appearance, the prisoners called her, Bubby. Coleman repeatedly beat female inmates. She used to whip women across the face. Even the pregnant women, she was kicking them until they lose consciousness. Annalisa started to sexually exploit younger women, as many of the female prisoners were trading sex for food. In return, she brought them food, cigarettes and clothing. During her work at the camp, a queer relationship started to blow between Annalisa and a Czech prisoner woman from Prague. It is said that the girl had her mother with her, who was 48 years old, and considered an old woman in the camp. She knew very well that the elderly and those no longer fit for work were threatened with murder. So, she had to save her mother's life by satisfying Annalisa lust and accept the sexual bartering. Several women reported that the two women exchanged caresses, and Coleman had spent nights with that girl in her barracks. She gave her shoes, clothes and food, things that were out of reach for the other prisoners. On April 7, 1945, the Tiefstuck satellite camp was closed, and the prisoners were taken to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, accompanied by Coleman, among others. On the way, she enabled four women to escape. Maybe they were among the women who had a physical relation with Annalisa. When she reached Bergen-Belsen camp, the commandant sent her back home, against her will. However, Coleman did not give up. In Hamburg, she met Willy Brockmann, the one who was prosecuted under Nazi law as a professional criminal. Brockmann was responsible for the inmates in the camp, handing out food, allocating people to forced labor and curfew at night. Coleman got a prisoner clothing and dressed in convict clothes, and Brockman helped her get into the camp. Coleman looked for that girl among the thousands of corpses and dying people, and found her alive. She spent the last few days with her before the British liberated the camp. On April 15, 1945, a British armored division reached the camp, and Coleman was handed by the prisoners over to the British, 
who ordered her to clear the piles of corpses, and bury the 10,000 victims lying around the camp. On May 16, 1946, Coleman stood before a British military court, in the second Belson trial. One of the allegations was, sexual perversion. Coleman was sentenced to only two years, due to her short service in the SS, and the defense claimed that she did not kill anyone. One year in custody was not counted against her. In full spittle, she was a lesbian in a solitary cell. After her release, the new beginning was difficult for the convicted war criminal. She suffered from anemia, and her elderly parents could no longer support her. For a few years, she apparently worked as a prostitute. Later she drove trucks. In the mid-1960s, she moved to West Berlin where she lived in Gudastrasse, in Charlottenburg, and worked as a cook in a hospital in Zellendorf. On September 17, 1977, Coleman died at her workplace at the age of 56. To close the curtain on the story of the forced sexual connection in the German Nazi concentration camps.